delivered around the world on your Android and Apple mobile devices. The Simple Truth, rising up to explore the difficult topics of real life. Join us as we proclaim the good, the true, and the beautiful with the simple truth of Jesus Christ and His Holy Catholic Church through Scripture, Tradition, and the Catechism. And now, your host, Jim Hayes. It is great to be back with you on The Simple Truth, where we proclaim the life-giving reality of Jesus and His Catholic Church. We consecrate everything to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Pure Strong Heart of St. Joseph, it is Wild Card Wednesday with our co-host Joanne Wright, co-founder of the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network. Every Wednesday, we're breaking open, open some aspect of the faith, hopefully in an engaging way that will inspire some audience participation with whatever you want to express or ask during the show. We'll get the phone number out there in just a moment. But first, Joanne Wright, how are you today? I'm, I'm well, Jim, today. We, we missed last week. We were at a... We were at a gala down in um, <laughs> Naples. It was a really, and we, we um, one of these weeks we'll talk about some of the speakers there. It was it was a great it was a great showing, and there are a lot of a lot of our guests there, and it, it was just a, a successful evening all together. Mm -hmm. so. Can you get us started with a prayer? Do you have a a prayer picked out for us today? I do. Um, we're gonna we're of our topic is all over the place with the church but um as i as, it, as we go by a church you know I, i'm realizing nobody even acknowledges the church anymore uh, i found a I found an article on alatea these 10 short prayers for when you pass a church and it was said that um saint francis every time he passed the church he would bow down, kiss the ground, and say the following prayer. So let's say that prayer, and this is in honor of Jesus in the tabernacle. And we adore you, O Lord Jesus Christ, in this church, and all the churches of the world, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And just this simple prayer as we go by, or an act of reverence as we go by any church, a sign of the cross, or I, you see, you see the old men tipping their hat, you know, just, just because they knew Jesus was in there. So let's always remember when we go by a church, who's right. in there. Yeah. yeah, oftentimes we're maybe zooming by in a car uh, and there's a church that we're, we're zooming past. Yeah, it's good to be aware of where that is, where the Catholic church is, where our Lord is in the tabernacle, a simple um, sign of the cross as an act of faith. Um, that, that's a beautiful thing to do. Also, I remember reading of some saint, I can't remember exactly who it was, it might have been St. John Vianney, may have been somebody else, but a, um, they would actually just do a nod of their head to actually not even necessarily towards our Lord in the tabernacle, but actually to the guardian angel that is guarding the church. So um, I forget, again, I forget which saint it was, but they were fleshing out that reality that there are guardian angels around guarding the church and to uh, uh, kind of give them a little, a little nod as you go by. Um, but to remember, yeah, the, the, the reality, the reality of what is actually going on um, specifically in these, uh, th these places of refuge, these places of life that, that are meant to be um, th these wells of life for us in the holy sacramental life of our Catholic Church to be encountering our Lord Jesus there um, in, in the fullest of ways. So, um, so what a blessing we have, how blessed we are, and that does lead us well, I think, into our, our lead question for today, which is the following. How does the bad news point to the good news? And the premise we're going off of here is that life, in this life, in this earthly life, we've got bad news bombarding us. It's constantly coming our way. But if we have the eyes to see, every bit of bad news actually affirms the truth of Jesus and his Catholic Church as the treasure worth giving everything for. So in our time together, together today, we want to lift up some recent examples of how the bad news points to the good news and consider how we might be able to utilize this way of seeing to increase our fidelity and help others to do the same. Uh, so Joanne, we got, this to the, got to this topic today based on some recent examples that you were noticing. Can you share some of that with us? What are you seeing right now? Well, 
we all heard about the the rosary as our weapon, and uh, it's it really it's laughable that it, it they made such a big deal about it that it's frightening and and the kind of people that are saying the rosary are 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 crazy bad people, you know. In a nutshell, we're we're nuts. But um, and so just that it's just ridiculous. And then I I saw a an actor, actress, whatever she is, a singer, Madonna, she, from from the very start of her career, you know, naming herself Madonna, she, she has this, this thing about uh, going, going the limit with religious, you know. So, so it was her birthday yesterday, I believe, or, and she did this photo op in a church in Italy, and, you know, she was doing all these poses on the, on the altar. Uh, she had a glass of wine on the altar. And, and I, I thought to myself, why is she, uh, is she obsessed with the church? Does she want it to bring it to her level, or is she just can't get away from it? And, and then you've seen others, you know, another couple, I don't even know, the, the Kardashians maybe, they did this mock ceremony at a church in in Italy after their their other marriage, you know, so they had to come to Italy and and do some mockery with some very immodest clothing and all over the altar and and I am just wondering why why our church for one thing is allowing this. No one's saying anything. Um why why these people are obsessed with I mean, what do you think? Do they want to bring the church down or do they want it? Do they want to make it uh, like a lot of people want the church to go in like like they like the church? They want the church to be their church in their in their terms. Is this what the, these people want, or are they just so um, enamored with it and they they see the beauty and they just want to be part of it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good questions, and we raise them to you, our audience. If you want to call in with a question or comment, anything you want to share on this topic today, one 511 5483 one 511 5483 Again, how does the bad news point to the good news? Uh, Joanne gives some great examples there we can look at. Do you see some examples you want to raise up as well? one 511 Five four eight three. Uh, two quick points jump out to me based on what you're putting forth there, Joanne, and that is number one that th- there is the enemy behind all of it, and he is obsessed with the Holy Catholic Church, and he knows it's real, right? He, so he knows it's true, and that it's real, and that this is the treasure that uh, th- that is worth everything, worth giving everything for, the pearl of great price, as as the Scripture speaks of, as Jesus reveals it in his parables, the treasure hidden in the field worth giving everything for it is jesus and his catholic church they are they are passing on to us uh, the, the deposit of faith that comes from Jesus down through the apostles, down through the ages. And we can be sure about the truth of divine revelation, what God has revealed to us. Also, the truths about natural law that are being safeguarded by the teachings of the church, the doctrine of the church. And so this is all real. This is all true. The enemy hates it. He can't just ignore it because it's true and it's actually the antidote um, from everything for everything evil that he is stirring up in the world. So he tries tries to mimic it. He, he tries to do things to ape it, to, to give examples of it being upside down or to have people commit, commit acts of sacrilege or mockery. Um, he has this obsession with the church in this way. And so we see this. When people are caught up in evil, um, they get caught up in, in this thing as well. They, they don't just ignore it. They don't just ignore the Catholic Church or ignore Jesus. They actually pervert it or commit acts of sacrilege in some way and so this points us again to the reality of it if it wasn't real if it wasn't true then people who didn't believe it was real or true would largely just be able to commit their evils and just ignore it and forget about it but they don't it's weighing on them because it is real and they're made for it Um, but their sin is um, is something they're not willing to give up. So these are obvious examples, extreme examples maybe that you bring forth, but they're very good ones because they help us to see it clearly. Uh, maybe as we go on in the show, we can drill down and get a little bit closer to home as we as we look at some examples. But anything else with regard to looking at these um, sort of extreme obvious examples that jumps out to you? 
Well, <clears throat> what what frightens me a lot is that um, many of the many children are not being baptized. It was it was uh, at least you know many many Catholics in the day they were baptized. There was a grace that came along with it, with the sacraments, your first first communion, confession, your confirmation. There's a grace, and and that stays with you forever. You baptized a Catholic. Nowadays, you leave the church, and you're not even baptizing your children. What kind of um, protection are they? Do they have at all? It's as if as if they're they they they're brought up with no conscience anymore, and. And I know God will provide and, and he will, you know, make his, himself known to everybody on this planet. But I, I fear for the people who are not um, even bringing their babies in or their children, not even trying it and, and allowing their children to grow up and say, well, I'll let them choose when they want. The Catholic Church really did nothing for me, obviously, if you're not even going to bring your children into it. So... Right. Yes. Original sin is washed away. In baptism, yeah. the, the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity infused into our souls by baptism. And at the same time, though, we ought to be just as concerned as those who are baptizing their children, taking the vows to say they're going to raise them up as Catholic. But it's really kind of all a self-deception or a game or a lie. And they don't actually strive to raise them up Catholic. It's a pick-or-choose type of thing. It's a watered-down type of thing. That is not an option. And so we're going to get to that as we get back from the break. We're going to talk about the truth of the faith of Jesus and his Catholic Church, how the bad news reveals it, what we can look at today to really understand this is real and we need to attract people to it and we can use the bad news to help us. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. This is Jesse Romero, host of Jesus 911, heard weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm joined each day by a variety of co-hosts like Ruben Nava, Paul Clay, Dan Schneider, and my amazing wife, Anita Romero. We tackle Catholic devotions, spiritual warfare, family life, saving America, and everything in between. Join us each weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific for Jesus 911. You can also catch a bonus encore Saturdays at noon Eastern. God bless you. Keep the faith. At the Station of the Cross, we are blessed by the variety of donations our listeners generously contribute for our evangelization efforts. From planned gifts to employer matches, we even receive donations through transfers of stock. Please consider giving a gift of stock to help us continue sharing the love of God with our hurting world. If you are being called by God to donate through a transfer of stock from your brokerage account to ours, please ask your broker to contact us at 1-877-888-6279. Your broker will need to indicate the number of shares being transferred as well as the QSIP number of those shares. That's 1-877-888-6279. Thank you for considering a gift of stock to the Station of the Cross so that we can continue proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. As a nonprofit lay organization financially independent from your diocese, our apostolate is listener supported. Through your generosity, we are able to inspire countless listeners with the gospel message and help lead them to a parish to be spiritually nourished by the sacraments. The Station of the Cross thanks our supporters who have enabled us to broadcast Catholic programs for more than 20 years. Thank you for your continued support and may God bless you and your family. Simple Truth, Jim Havens here with Joanne Wright, our co-host every Wednesday here, Wild Card Wednesday, talking today about this question. How does the bad news point to the good news? Talked about some examples from uh, pop culture and other things that, were, uh, that we were raising up in that first segment, but 
Um, what do you have to say? What, what do you have to um, add to this conversation today? Do you have an example that you want to throw into the mix? How does the bad news point to the good news? one 511 5483 1-877-511-5483. Let's look at this from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Again, as a sort of point of good news that we can see revealed in the bad news of people that um, they've rejected Jesus and the church, the proposal that Jesus comes to bring to say, hey, do you believe in me or not? Do you believe in this truth that I have revealed and handed on or not? Do you believe in my Catholic church or not? It's not a, do you believe just little bits of it? Do you believe in me? And do you believe in my church that I have given to you, that I've died to give to you, the whole thing, the, the full of revelation handed on to the church for you in faith and morals. Do you believe, right? This is what opens everything up for us. But some have rejected this, and yet they're still kind of hanging around the church, either um, using it as a photo op in some way, or they want to be married in the church, even though they're rejecting the church, or they want to have a, a Catholic funeral, even though they actually reject the teachings of the faith, or they're sitting in the pews every Sunday, even though they're pro-abortion and pro-contraception. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to play this game of pretend when this is the truth, and I think this is what but that bad news is all pointing to is that uh, in, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2070, it states from the beginning, God had implanted in the heart of man the precepts of the natural law. Then he was content to remind him of them. This was the Decalogue, says St. Irenaeus. It goes on to say that the commandments of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, although accessible to reason alone, they have been revealed to attain a complete and certain understanding of the requirements of the natural law. So sinful humanity needed this revelation. A full explanation of the commandments of the Decalogue became necessary in the state of sin because the light of reason was obscured and the will had gone astray. We know God's commandments through the divine revelation proposed to us in the church and through the voice of moral conscience. So what the catechism is pointing to there is that even though the natural law is stamped into us, right, because of sin, because the light of reason is obscured, the will goes astray, we still need the ten, the ten Commandments that are stamped into our very hearts. We still need that revealed by God, which is what um, God did also do, reveal it to confirm that truth and make it all the more known, to unpack it and show us everything that's contained in there. Jesus did that. You can read about it in the Ten Commandments section in the Catechism of the Catholic Church that breaks each one of them open. Remember, Jesus said, oh, you... Uh, you think you're not committing adultery? Well, have you ever looked at, at a woman with lust? And and he breaks them open. Oh, you think you're not committing uh, this act of murder? Have you not uh, have you not been um, gravely, sinfully angry with somebody and, and, and not repented? So he's pointing at these things, breaking these commandments open. We need to know it because we need to live it. This is what we're for, the positive side of those commandments. And so we want to live it to the full. We want to be able to love God with all that we are, love one another according to what is good and true and beautiful. This is what we're made for. Every piece of bad news that we see ought to be pointing us to say, well, there's an opposite side of this. There's a light to this darkness. There's a goodness on the other side that this is pointing to. Let me see what that is and seek to move closer to it. But to understand that foundation that Jesus and his Catholic Church are the real deal and we need him. We need his church and we need to follow the conscience that we've been given and form that conscience and follow our Lord with the morality that he died to show us so clearly. Let's live it to the full, even in a world that completely wants to flip it and say what is good is actually bad, what is bad is actually good. So there's a time of great confusion that we're in in the world within the human element of the church, but none of that needs to trouble us too much in terms of our own faith if we simply have a clear mind, a clear heart on what is true and strive to live it to the full by God's grace. Joanne, your thoughts. Um, I, there's, there's so many distractions <clears throat> that people, they make excuses for. There's, there's, every time they try to uh, find peace, they'll they'll run to anything they can more so in this time than any any other time i believe i think this is the, this is probably one of the most evil times 
that that the world has gone through. That's my thought. I think it. Well, that's my thought. Anyway, uh, we're there. There's such distractions, and we we need to um, we need to know know where the peace will come from. Even even the greatest of saints who were in so, who were. Uh, I was reminded of. Um, Bartolo Longo and 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 that Saint and Bruno, I think is blessed Bruno. These people were were demonic. They 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 wanted to overthrow the church. They wanted to kill the Pope, and they what what God did for them in in the way of miracles, in the way of uh, and he just came out of nowhere. And all they had to do was just give a little something, just a little inch of acknowledgement whether it's through their families or whatever you know and, and he will do so many miracles for you he will he will show you he, you will know beyond a doubt that he's real and and you the the everyone I, I think everyone who's had a conversion can say this everyone who's had a conversion can say what god did in their life that they'll never forget because they'll there will be a time he'll he'll put us to a test and we'll we'll our, our our faith muscles will have to stretch will be put to a test and and so we have to he has to give us these good things these these acknowledgement these inspirations consolations he has to give it to us because the world will snatch it away as quick as as quick as god gives it yeah and we are each and every one of us are being tested already every day. If we have the eyes to see, there are questions that come up every single day that test us, right? Are we going to do what is right and good and true? Do we really believe in this faith that the Catholic Church is? Or are we kind of, you know, self-deceiving ourselves and kind of playing a game? We believe it, but only so much, not enough to actually act on it, not enough to actually correct the person in front of us that, the Lord is prompting us. They need some correction, especially if it's somebody that is under our authority, that we actually have a responsibility, um, a very grave responsibility to correct like a child. Um, we're going to get into some of that as we go today. But first, let's go to the phone lines. I believe we do have a caller on the line. I don't have the, the name or place you're calling from, but Colin in Buffalo just got it. All right, Colin, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you, Mr. Havens, and thank you, Joanne, for the show and for this topic today. Thanks, Colin. Um, what are your thoughts? I would, I would like to add to the conversation, and um, you know, in our faith, we 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 should believe that um, these persecutions and these evil times we live in are for the glorification of the church. Um, and in, and what I mean by that is, certainly we have a lot of evils within the church, and I can't think of any other way God could um, get the evil out other than an extreme chastisement and a persecution to, to further glorify him and his church. Um, and to put that on a more of a micro level, personal level, um, I can't imagine how I would have the faith that I have, thank God that, that I have it, but without the um, scourgings and, and uh, tests that God has put me through that led me to my faith. Um, so truly I see, I see all this bad that we're experiencing as not just unfortunate. It's not unfortunate. It's more just a necessity of God to get the love that he deserves. Perfect. Perfect. That's, that's so true. That's so true. And we see the, um, we see the, the, the division in the church and why, why would there be division in the church within the church between, uh, uh, <laughs> It's it's as if uh, you you could the Catholic Church is one holy true Catholic Church, and and you can sh you should be able to go to one church and 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 praise and, and worship God in in the same way, and but it seems like some people are being persecuted out of the church, and again going back to what you're saying, Colin. It's part of it's part of his glorification. It's part of um, our our purification, and you know, less time, less purging and purgatory, I suppose. But <clears throat> yeah, that's I, that's I, what I thought of when when you were speaking. I I really feel there's persecution coming from within the church, and it's 
Yeah, well, yeah, we certainly see examples of that in the human element of the church, the human leadership of the church. Sadly, those uh, examples have become more and more clear as the uh, recent years have gone by. Colin, we do thank you for the call today. And it does bring up to me the example, um, which is very bad news, which is the ongoing daily mass murder of abortion. How can we see what good news is this pointing to? And uh, one of the, the pieces of good news I think it points to, if we have the eyes to see, is that we are called um, to, to live who we are in terms of response of this massive evil before us, not by ignoring this massive evil, not by ignoring uh, the little ones in the womb that are being ignored, de dehumanized, discarded, killed, murdered, thrown away every single day by the thousands in our nation, by the hundreds of thousands worldwide every day. Um, we are not to go along with that even to the, to, the, to the smallest degree. We are to rouse ourselves. What an opportunity we have in this time to live our faith, to be a voice in this time, to speak out, to try to show people the reality to try to help move people um, to be against this, to strive to push forward to the to the end of, of this, to abolish abortion, where it will be illegal in law, unthinkable in culture. What is the influence, the, the sphere of influence that we have? Let's make the most of it, each and every one of us, regardless of what the human element of the leadership of the church is or is not doing. We can't count on them. That's other bad news, that they're not actually giving an adequate response to this great evil. Um, but we need to notice that and say, well, let me look at the truth of what I'm called to do. What can we do as grassroots members of the church to come together? We've got power in the Holy Spirit to come together, to rise in this time that we are in. And that's the good news, that the Holy Spirit is still animating us. And anybody who wants to participate with him, uh, he, he will take you, right? So we have to be honest about humbling ourselves, saying yes to God. And there are some concrete measurements that we can look at to, to break through any self deception exception on that. And, uh, and I would say, um, well, I'll get back to that, I guess, after the break, because Joanne, I want to get you uh, to have a word in here before we get to the break. Anything else that's stirring in you? No, just so many, so many women who have come back to the church because they realized what, what a horrific thing they had done. And, and it was, they were told that they were told, you know, it'll go away. It's nothing, it, whatever they say. And you come, you come out of there knowing, what have I done? You killed something? Kill someone? And you don't, you don't fully understand that, you know? So, so many women have come, come back to the church through this evil, and God will take, take the great evil and make such good. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about how, how the bad news points to the good news. Uh, the good news is there. There is a beauty that still remains, and it is great, and it is glorious, but we are in a time of warfare in this earthly life. We can't turn away from the bad news. We have to notice it, see it for what it is, and help to, to help other people to see it for what, for what it is as well. It's an opportunity to point other people to the good news that is hiding behind this bad news. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is Life News Radio. I'm Jim Anderson. As promised, America After Row is sending abortion battles to states while President Biden turns his attention to promoting international abortion. Former VP Mike Pence says he envisions all 50 states protecting life. Right now, the life issue is active in states like Mississippi, Kentucky, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Florida, and Michigan. While the Supreme Court in Michigan has six months to answer two lawsuits challenging a 1931 abortion ban, courts have put that ban on hold. Meanwhile, a November ballot seeking to add unlimited abortion to Michigan's Constitution is being challenged for irregularities typically not tolerated in documents like state constitutions. Governor Whitmer, running for re-election, says she is very happy about abortion and her state's prospects for unlimited limited abortion. Kentucky's November election may decide to exclude any mention of abortion from its constitution, and a Florida amendment wants to go further by giving recognition to a God-given right to life for unborn children. This is Life News Radio.
Persecution around the world has manifested itself through the centuries, but it is worse today than ever before. Aid to the Church in Need and its donors have been there to help since 1947, never abandoning the Church or her most vulnerable children. Will you stand up for your faith and accompany our brothers and sisters on their spiritual journey? Visit churchinneed.org. churchinneed.org. In other headlines, polls in Ohio continue offering hope for pro-life candidates in governor and U.S. Senate races. And for the second time in a month, Planned Parenthood has been caught changing medical information for patients. A baby's heartbeat is now called cardiac activity. For pro-life headlines delivered to your email address daily, sign up at lifenews.com. This has been Life News Radio. Simple Truth, Jim Havens here with our co-host every Wednesday, Joanne Wright, talking about the question today, how does the bad news point to the good news? Lifting up some examples, if you want to speak to this topic in any way, give us a call now, 1-877-511-5483, 1-877-511-5483. Before we get to emails and phone lines and, and more thoughts here, just wanted to, uh, again, point to the Catechism of the Catholic Church on the theological virtue of faith uh, it is paragraph 18, 14. It says this, Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God and believe all that he has said and revealed to us, all of it, and that the Holy Church proposes for our belief because he is truth itself. By faith, man freely commits his entire self to God. For this reason, the believer seeks to know and to do man's will. The believer actually believes that God is who he says he is and that what he, re he has revealed is trustworthy because he is who he says he is. And so we believe in the Holy Catholic Church because we believe in Jesus who instituted, instituted it. That's me that means we believe in sacred scripture, sacred tradition, the magisterium of the Catholic, Catholic Church, the deposit of faith that has been handed down to us from Jesus. Jesus, through the apostles, down through the ages to us today. It is rock solid. We can trust in it because God is trustworthy and he wants us to know these things and to live them. St. Augustine says this about faith as well, connecting it to the gift of understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit. He says, understanding is the reward of faith. So the fa faith comes first, saying yes to Jesus and his Catholic Church, then comes understanding. St. Augustine says, therefore, seek not to understand that thou may then believe, but believe that thou may understand. Again, when we say yes, when we enter into it, that's when it will truly open up for us. But we have to say yes to all of it because it's not, if we believe that it's really God revealing this, which it is, then he's not, part of his revelation isn't correct and then part of it is false or part of it wasn't correct at one time in human history and now all of a sudden it's false because popular demand says it is. And let me just bring this into the concrete. Let's, let's bring it down um, much closer to home with this example. And then Joanne, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Uh, let's think of this. So the family, right? We know the family is under assault. Here's the truth. The family must be under God. This is the good news. We all must be under God, but the family must be under God. We have to put our families um, at the submission under God, not God under the family, right? This can happen in our American culture, family, 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 but not under God, right? And let me show you how this lays out, right? Like nice, must not be under authentic love, right? Um, I, I'm sorry, nice must be under authentic love rather than um, love being underneath nice. The example being that, look, when a family member is committing a grave sin, very difficult, right? Do we actually believe the truth in that moment or not really? Do we kind of cast the truth aside in order to be more nice to the family member? Nice in our version of, of nice, I guess, in this example to say, well, I, you know, I can really understand why that's going on. And, uh, you know, I'm sure God understands too. And, you know, we just kind of water it down, right? But this is really where we can measure ourselves. Do we really believe that truth or not, to make it even more concrete, let's say it's a parent knowing that their adult child is committing the grave evil of sex outside of marriage, right? What, what if you knew that? You're a parent, your child is committing this grave evil of sex outside of marriage, 
Um, how do you handle that? Do you just kind of go along with it? Your job to fulfill the vows of your vocation is to correct your child, to, to do the spiritual work of mercy, to admonish the sinner, which is your responsibility because that's your child. Now, it's, it goes a lot deeper. There's a lot going on that would lead to that moment that probably was lacking within the upbringing of that child. Yes, everybody has free will. Those children can go off the rails on their own, but let's be honest. It's gonna be very rare that a child does go just off the rails on their own, deep into habitual mortal sin. Um, if everything was on point, throughout the raising of that child. So we gotta be honest about this. We've gotta be humble about this and, and deal with it for what it really is. So not turn away from the bad news, really examine the bad news. What can we learn from the bad news? What is the good news and how can we step into it and do the good that we are called to do? And one last thing on this, I just wanna give hope to people who are in difficult situations with things like this to understand like, look, bad habits, self-deception, you might be just totally lost saying, how can I handle this situation? I want to stand up for God and what for and for what he says is true. But I also want to, I don't want to lose the relationship. I know they're going to react badly. How do you handle all that? Understand this, that a lot of it is our own difficulty, weakness, again, bad habits, things on our part that, that, that we've allowed to go on. And, and it seems insurmountable because it is insurmountable on our own. The only way out is to humbly, humbly turn to God, to lay ourselves before our Lord in complete humility and say, God, I need you to give me a new heart. I need you to help me make me new so I can handle this. As I am, there's no hope for me to be able to handle this, right? To humbly go before him and say, God, give me a new heart. Help me to begin again. Help me to repent from places that I haven't yet repented, places that I've been playing games with myself. I turn back to you. I want the fullness of your truth because I believe in you fully. I want to live it, and I want to live it in respect to authentic love to those around me, which is going to be difficult. I can only do it if you give me a new heart and then dive into that prayer life with him every day. Let everything flow from there. It's our only hope, but it's real because his, he's real. Joanne, your thoughts. <clears throat> uh, we have to, we're kidding ourselves if we think our, is, is, it, we could raise our children in a, in, in a monastery, but we, we're kidding ourselves if we think they're going to come out and be perfect humans. And we're going to see our children uh, fail. We're going to see them sin. And, and we just can't give up. We can't give in to their, their, their as you said, they, their, if, if, they choose, if they choose to leave the church or whatever, or get, get married and, and, or, or live a, an alternate lifestyle, whatever, we, we can't go along with it. But we can't give up on them. And so many times... It's, it's, a, it's for our own purification to watch our family, to watch our family just wallow in the sin. And I know many people who have given up and they just say, okay, well, that's it. You know, it, it, I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose him, so I'm just going to go along with it. You know, he's it, it, whatever. So um, just don't give up, but don't. Don't um, don't give up on your prayers for them, but don't don't go don't tell them what they're doing is okay or pretend it's okay. It's just not. It it, it will never change then. Mm -hmm. But your prayers will. Your prayers will change them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prayer and work. That's what it's all about. Do you want to add anything to this topic? Any question? Any comment you want to add in? Now is the time to call one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three. Um, let, let us just remember the first commandment, right? I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make uh, for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. 
Uh, the Catechism says on this, 2087, our moral life has its source in faith in God who reveals his love to us. St. Paul speaks of the obedience of faith as our first obligation. He shows that ignorance of God is the principle and explanation of all moral deviations. Our duty towards God is to believe in him and to bear witness to him. The first commandment requires us to nourish and to protect our faith with prudence and vigilance and to reject everything that is opposed to it. What a gift we have in our time. 2,000 years of the treasury of the Catholic Church, sacred tradition, sacred scripture, sacred magisterium. There is so much that we can just soak in to build ourselves up in the various categories the Holy Scriptures, the Church father, Fathers, their commentaries on the Scriptures, the, saint, the writings from the lives of the saints. We've got so much. So as Joanne, you were talking about earlier, that all the distraction, let's not give in to the ways of the world. How much are we soaking in the good stuff? Right? That's also a very concrete measurement we can look to about are we kind of just deceiving ourselves, sort of playing along, pretending this sort of Catholic game, but not really striving to live it to the full. Um, Joanne, any other um, encouragements that come to mind and how we can you know, see through the bad news and get to the good news and live it to the full and help others to do the same? This, pro this probably isn't very encouraging, but I, I love to... Um Go back and read about these the mystics who've, ta who've talked about these times we're in, and everything is just going right along, coming right to play. And our this Mother Mariana, Our Lady of Good Success, and that's it's all approved. And she did the Blessed Mother said the sacraments. She told her the sacraments would come under attack in different ways, and she said it would be difficult to receive the sacrament of baptism and also that of confirmation. The devil will make a great effort to destroy the sacrament of confession by means of people in positions of authority. There will be an unspeakable profanation of the Holy Eucharist in our time. The enemies of Jesus Christ, instigated by the devil, will steal consecrated hosts from the churches so that they may profane the Eucharistic species. My most holy son will see himself cast upon the ground and trampled upon by filthy feet. People will not esteem the sacrament of holy unction, and many will die without receiving it. And many souls will be deprived of innumerable graces, consolations, and the strength they need to make that great leap from time to eternity. So if we're not living in these times now, <laughs> well, there, you, know, you know there's going to be a remnant and the church will prevail through all this, but this, if, if we think things are bad now, which we see this, these things happening now, and, but she does said, it, she, she'll not leave us orphans, and we'll, there'll, be, there'll be a time when uh, her immaculate heart will triumph. But, but most of all, I want our families to be the remnant to, to, to to be the remnant of the church that is, um, I'm losing my, <laughs> to be the, be the church remnant for, for, because our Lord has promised it and he, he'll never, he'll never let it go. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only way that happens is by each one of us holding ourselves accountable and saying, look, what can I do, right, to dive into this as it truly is, to see God as it truly, truly is, not make a false image of God, one that makes me feel better, um, one that makes it more comfortable. Um, he, his real image is going to make you uh, feel way better and way more comfortable in the end in heaven for all eternity, believe me. But even now, if we're willing to truly say yes to him, to trust him, that he has his, our best interest in his heart, in his mind, he wants what is better for us than what we could ever even imagine. If we believe that, then we want to be fully faithful to what he has revealed to us, to what Jesus is revealing to us, what he has handed on to us through his Catholic 
church. It is all real. Let us live the life of faith. Let us live the moral life to the full without compromise. This is the the test. This is the opportunity that is before us. And here's one quick thing that I think is helpful to make sure we have things in right order, in proper perspective. Otherwise, you might see the bad news of saying, hey, you know, I don't really like my life. I'm not really happy with my life. Well, let's start with the prayer life, right? If we are really living an authentic prayer life, a real prayer life that we are called to live, that's where we find our happiness. We're going to find times of great consolation there. There will be times of desolation, but there's also going to be times of great consolation. Foundationally, we are going to find our peace and our joy in our Lord every day in our times of prayer. And then we're going out from there, even though prayer is a battle too, but then we're going out from that prayer and we're doing battle in the world against the temptations that are coming our way, trying to help others to enter into the rescue that Jesus has for them, doing the good uh, work, fulfilling our vocations, doing the good of of the apostolic opportunities that are before us. But it's going to be hard, right? So if we know that, then we, we look at our times of prayer as this sort of time of peace that we are being filled, and then we go out with our Lord and we do the battle. And that's, I think, the way we've got to see it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We are helping to bring the Catholic community together through our Catholic Community Events page. You can discover the details about a community calendar event that you've heard on the air. Just click on the events tab at thestationofthecross.com and find your local station. If your parish or Catholic organization has an upcoming event and you'd like to get the word out, you can submit it for consideration under the events tab as well at thestationofthecross.com. Are you holding on to an old car or truck because you think dealers won't want it? Then consider donating it to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. This is a great way to turn your unvalued vehicle into a powerful gift for Catholic Radio. You'll be taking part in our evangelization efforts to continue spreading Christ's love throughout the world. Our Lord uses Catholic Radio to draw more people to Himself, and one of the best ways to support the Station of the Cross is by contributing to our vehicle donation program. The process is safe and simple. Your generosity will greatly benefit our mission to bring the truths of the Catholic faith to countless listeners. To find out more or to donate your vehicle today, visit thestationofthecross.com or call 1-866-628-CARS. That's the station of the cross.com or 1 866 628 2277. Do you love listening to the station of the cross on your car radio, but sometimes find yourself driving outside the listening area? Never miss another minute of your favorite show. Download the iCatholic Radio app so you can listen anywhere in the world 24 hours a day. The iCatholic Radio app is available for your phone in the Apple Store or for your Android phone in Google Play. Visit thestationofthecross.com for more information. Here, co-host Joanne Wright with us every Wednesday here, Wildcard Wednesday. Last chance to get your phone call in, 1-877-511-5483. That's 1-877-511-5483. All right, let's go to the emails here, Joanne. Tell me uh, your reaction to this. This is Kim in Auburn, New York, who writes to us, I agree that bad news points to good news. The evil in today's world is becoming so bold that it no longer tries to disguise itself. It is so blatant that there are some that say abortion should be protected under religious freedom. But this boldness of evil actually affirms what is right and good. You can see what is a threat to evil by what they attack. That God made us male and female, traditional marriage and family life, that life begins at conception, most recently attacks on the rosary as a symbol of extremism, point to its power against evil. Joanne, your thoughts? I agree. I agree that we're being put to a test. And uh, I I think the whole, when I'm saying the rosary and it's just over and over again and you you try so hard to to meditate, but I I have to think that God is, every every word is being used. And because there's going to come a time where 
maybe we won't, we won't even be able to say the rosary, whatever. We won't, there might be a time without sacraments. But we have to know that these graces we're um, piling up right now are going are to last. God is going to bring out prodigies. What he's doing right now that we can't see, I think that's just a, that's a test of our faith right now. That's, it, we're just being tested right now j- just to say, you know, God, what, what are you doing? I mean, we, we overturn Roe, and, and what happens? Every, every, every big corporation is, is pushing, and it seems like it's worse now because I, it's such a dis, distasteful thing, disgusting, that they would just pay for women just to go travel to here. Here's some money. Here's a bus. Go, go get your abortion. Then you can come back to work next week. It, to me, that's that can that can bring you down. But I know, I know in my heart that every prayer I say, every 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 communion I I have, every confession, I'm I'm building up graces that will that will hold me through to a time where. And I I didn't mean to bring up such a, a, a <laughs> down when you ask for an, an encouraging word. I, I do believe it's going to get worse. But, but we have to know God is working, and we may not see it, but he's going to, in the end, it's, we're not going to even imagine that it was even this bad. Right, yeah. Ultimately, yeah, the good news that if we stick with him, right, he's sticking with stick us, with we him. can trust in him. Right, we can trust in him if we can if we can remain faithful to him and even strive to grow even more fully in faith to him and all that he has revealed. The end of that story is glorious. There, there's no yeah. other ending to it. Yeah. Right, it's heaven for all eternity, perfect union with God for all eternity, and with all those others in heaven. That's where we want to be. Right, and so that's what we have to understand about the pilgrimage of this life. And yes, prayer is a battle at times. It, the, the battle of prayer. That's how the Catechism talks about. It. So even when you're praying that rosary and it's super dry, you're really struggling to meditate, Of it is a value, maybe more valuable, as long as you're not shirking it and trying, you know, not trying to actually pray it well. If you're striving to pray it well and it's just hard to pray it well and you persevere in that, that is a very efficacious rosary. That's a good prayer. So stick with that and uh, that's going to be good. But when we do pray, when we're committed to prayer, there are going to be times of consolation with our Lord that um, there's no other there's no other comparison to when our Lord gives us that uh, that that consolation in prayer. Um, it is again, it's just confirming the truth of who He is and what He's doing for us. I think He He builds us up with that consolation, but He also gives us that desolation as an opportunity to be built up as well. So this this bad news, if you remain faithful, you're getting stronger and stronger, and He's preparing us, yeah, for maybe much much darker things in this earthly life to come that we need to be stronger for. Let's go to the uh, phone lines here. We've got Susan on the line with us. Susan, what is your uh, what is your thinking today? What would you like to share with us? I just have a question. I have a, a family member that uh, they she claims she um, suffers from same-sex attraction but was born that way. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Joanne, do you want to well, say anything to that? Well, simply god didn't make the mistake why why was she born that way it's 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 that old that old reason there's well god didn't really make you know there's no creator you know you have to have a belief that what you are i don't like that i'm 411 i really don't but i was born that way and i'm not going to be bigger and i'm not going to tell anybody i'm i'm 58 and I'm not going to tell anybody I'm uh, quite thin. Why? Why does someone think that they can just say, "I am not this person. I am not what God made me." It, it's it's not, nothing more than I think a mental mental illness, and and the world is feeding it, and and teachers and doctors they're feeding it, and they've got parents believing it, and it's it's just wrong, it, it, and there's. I'm sure you've heard there's a hospital in, in, in Boston. It has its own wing now, and, and they're doing all kinds of surgeries. And uh, it's butchering these children. They're, they're, they're butchering their, their breasts. They're, and 
it, it hormones and everything. So I, it's just an evil thing, and you you just going to have to say you're not, and you have to speak to this person. You have to say, no, you were born this way. I was there when you were born. <laughs> Is it your daughter? You said or a uh, niece. Your niece. You saw your niece when she was born. <laughs> It just doesn't settle with me, and it never will because it's not truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Susan, I would just uh, speak into that by saying that um, even though, yeah, people can try to make all sorts of debates about, um, you know, how how things how things take place in terms of uh, birth. You know, there's no scientific evidence of anyone being born uh, with uh, with gender dysphoria of you know all of that stuff or being like um you know with same-sex attraction necessarily anything like that we, we just we, we don't know how all that works but what we can say for sure is that um it's disordered right this is a disordered inclination the, the catechism of the catholic church is very very clear about this um and and so we need to we need to be clear there as well that this is a disordered inclination and this is not something to just go with obviously right this is not something that if you have this disordered inclination just like any other disordered inclination you would want to figure out how to um, how to make it rightly ordered or at least how not to act on the disorder at the very least right so this is the way you'd want to think about it and try to talk about it and there are some great resources by some great people um, from the that, that have gone into great research and experience with this Hudson Biblo comes to mind as one he's one that we've had on the show in the past um, and, and there are several others who have struggled with the disorder of same-sex attraction and give a real Catholic witness to the right way to be handling that and all of that so there are great resources out there to help as well but you want to speak the truth in love and we can't water it down we can't um, change it to try to be nice uh, so just want to encourage you you know in the lord to, to stay true uh, to the truth in love the best you can uh, how's that Susan? yes and also um, pray for her like you've never prayed before because there's not only is it like jim said interest intrinsic disorder there's demonic forces working here and there's a great book it's deliverance prayers for use by the laity and there's so many great prayers in there that you can be praying against this oppression on your knees and and believe me you you'll see it you'll see a change that these these prayers and the rosary you'll see a change and and the lie of the world is telling her that this is your identity you're, you're homosexual. This is your identity. You can't not but act on this, right? So we want to counteract that by the good news, which is, no, this is not your identity. Your identity is you are made to be in union with Jesus, into the family of God, as a daughter of the King, a daughter of the Father in the Holy Spirit, a member of the Catholic Church. Your dignity is far greater than what the world is holding right. out for you. So give her that image. Give her that vision. Give her the catechism and uh, and let her know that this is true love and that she is made for so much more. Thank you so much for the call, Susan, for all the audience. Joanne, always great to be with you. God bless you. Magnificat.